Hi, I'm Adam Sebastian, and we'll be doing a 6 inch Schedule 80 pipe in the 5G position. First, we're going to grind our pipe and put lands on it. We're going to clean the inside and outside of the weld to bright, shiny metal. We're going to put clean, smooth strokes with the grinder to make so there's no highs or lows in our grinding. We are going to put a 332nd land on the pipe and check it with our 332 gap rod. We're going to put the two pieces of pipes together without a gap rod in them for right now and check to see if there's any high low. By doing that I run my fingers across the inside of the pipe to see if there's any sort of gap or deviation in the pipe. So I took a 332 welding rod, I chipped all the flux off of it and I bent it in half to form a 332 gap that I can set the pipe on top of. Setting the one piece of pipe on top of the 332 gap rod and always checking to ensure that there's a 332 gap and landing all around the pipe and checking the inside to see if there's any high low. And now we're going on to fitting and tacking our pipes together. Today we'll be using a 6010 for the root pass. We're going to tack this test coupon in three places. As you can see, my technique is starting from the bottom bevel and going into the root opening and bridging the gap between the two. I'm going for about a three quarter of an inch I'm using a gap wedge to ensure that I get a 332 gap and so I can have a proper weld. To have high quality Instagram type welds, you need to ensure that you have proper fit up every single time. When you're taking a test, you always want to make sure you take your time and prep it properly. So how I prep my tacks is I'm going to grind them to a feathered edge meaning I'm going to run the grinder across and back and forth on the tacks to feather out and make them thinner so I can tie in and tie out properly. When putting the pipe into the jig fixture, we are going to ensure that we have a proper tack to come off of. So by that, we are going to look at which keyhole is the most symmetrical on the pipe. This we will place at the bottom position. I clamped a vice grip to the inside of the pipe for an armrest. There's something called the ABCs of welding. Always be comfortable. Before welding, always do a dry run to make sure that there's no obstacles in your way. For your rod position, you want to be perpendicular to the pipe and always aim the rod right at the center of the pipe. For the root pass, I'll be using a whip and pause technique where I'm going to jump slightly out of the puddle and come back, allowing it to cool. You know you're getting adequate penetration in the pipe when you hear a distinctive sound change coming through the pipe. Always grind your tie-ins to ensure proper fusion when coming off of them. When doing a restart, you always want to start your arc behind where you ended off your last weld. That will ensure the rod heats up enough and you get proper fusion coming off of the weld. I long arc right at the beginning when I strike my arc so the rod heats up faster. With heat comes distortion. So when I was traveling up the pipe, it got hot and the gap shrunk. To combat the distortion, I turned up the amps and held a tighter arc length. This helps getting better penetration. To show you what root fusion looks like, we cut a pipe in half. 
We are using a high dynamic range camera to show you what it looks like to get proper root fusion on the backside. After finishing the root pass, I went ahead and started grinding the root to bright shiny metal so I don't have any slag inclusions and to take all the high spots out. Just like the 6010, our rod angle will remain the same with the 7018. With the 7018, we're going to use a slightly different motion and we'll be weaving side to side holding a very tight arc. To help me achieve a flat weld profile, I end up pressing the rod against the side of the bevel walls. When inspecting your welds that you've completed, always make sure there's no slag on the toes of your weld. For capping, I will be using the stringer method instead of a weave, just because I feel more confident in it and it allows me to have more control. Following the beveled edges, I use that as a guide to ensure that my weld is straight and uniform. With restarts on a 7018, I strike about an inch ahead of the previous weld and I go and tie in by using a loop motion in the crater of the previous weld. I did a two bead cap which is unconventional, a lot of guys will do a weave, but that's just my personal preference. You can see on the toes of the weld, they are tied in nicely and there is no undercut. Thank you for watching. I hope some of my tips and tricks can help you in your future welding career.